Welcome back to the next video of Spring Boot Essential Drink Series, guys. So let me open this project. So we will look at what was the last thing we finished in the last video. Now we were able to create this application using Spring uh, Framework and Java as a backend language. For front end, we used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now we got all the images coming from our repository. So this is a project repository.java class. And we have this project model. We have this index.html file. I want to modify the index.html file first. Now let's go to here. So as you can see here, we have this uh, section of skills. And inside that I have another section, front end, back end, programming in front end web. I want to just hide this for like a, just a temporary. So what we can do, we're going to go find the div of that skill entry. And then here we can use the bootstrap class called hidden. And I'm going to save it. And let's restart our server and let's see if we were able to hide this div by using this hidden class. All right, server has started. I'm going to refresh the page. And there we go. That section gone now looks all right. Okay, so we were able to create all of these project images coming from our project repository. I'm going to click on it. And right now, once I click on the project image, it actually take us on the top of the page because in the index.html file, we have this anchor tag, but inside that we got a href as this hash sign. So that's what it's doing. Now we are going to create this dynamic. We have another HTML document. So I'm going to show you this projects. Now if I go here and then type projects here, it will take us to the next page. This is a project page, right? So in the project page, we just have this H1 tag. That's what it's doing. Now I want to create this a bit dynamic. I want to uh, click on a project image and it should take us to the next project dot index uh, project dot HTML file with the the project with the same project what we clicked on so we can create that a dynamic first of all we are going to go to controller file and here let's look at this uh, project page method so in the project page methods we had this annotation request mapping which has the value of slash projects we just seen that we have the model map model map and i've already explained all of these things now here we are giving it a static value, P4. P4 is coming from our project repository. So this is the P4, which is, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like what's the image? If we look at the static folder in the assets, we have this P4. So that's the project image, right? I wanna make it dynamic. Let's go back to the controller.java file. And here, first of all, we are going to add another annotation in the parameters of our project page method. That is going to be bot variable. So we're going to add bot variable. We're going to name it. Uh, let's, we, we're going to give a data type as well. It's a string. And the name we can give, let's just say project name. Okay. Once we add that parameter, add a comma here so we don't get any error and now this is the static path right I want to make a little bit of dynamic here so here after this uh, slash projects in the request mapping I want to add a slash here add a curly brace and then here I want to pass in that string variable name project name so it's going to take the value from this uh, this variable in our parameters so we can type here project name okay add a curly brace so we don't get any error now here we've seen that we're getting uh, we're using this find by project name method coming from our project repository so here we have this method here which basically does it goes into a list of our projects and then look for whatever the name we pass into this method. So this is the name, right? So we pass in whatever the name, we pass in P1, P2, P4, P6, or P7, and then it will return the value of our project, and then we will use the controller method to get the value from our repository, and then we just pass into our request mapping page. Right, so here instead of uh, P4, 
I'm going to type the project name a variable. Now it's a dynamic. And then in the model map, we add this uh, project key value and then object is a project. So this is the project object. So we created from our model class. Okay. Now we got this and let's go back to the controller file actually. Now we are returning the projects. We basically uh, return these projects to a request a mapping. Right, so we will click on an image and then it will take us to the next page with the Pacific image. Now we need to do a bit of modification to our index.html file as well. So let's go to index.html file and here we have this static hash. We want to change this. And here I want to add at start a curly brace and then add a static value first. The so static value is a project. So this is a projects.html file, right? This is always going to be static. It's not going to change. So we can add a static value by using a single code and then type slash projects slash and then single code. And then we will add our, we will concatenate our variable with the plus sign. Now here for the variable in Teamleaf templating engine, we use the dollar sign. So type dollar, open curly braces, and then here we pass in projects dot project name, add a curly brace as well. Okay, now you probably be confused about it. So this projects, this is value is coming from our this this is the projects. Okay, and then we have this dot projects name. So that's the variable we accessing in our controller file. Now how does how the Spring or Java knows this is a controller? We see we added a controller annotation on the top of the class, right? Okay, so now uh, index.html file is set up. Now let's go to projects.html file. And here we wanna add our image, right? We want to take that uh, image this project name and we want to pass into this index.html as well. So first of all, let's add our theme leaf templating engine for th tagging. So xmlns colon th is equal to http www.themeleaf.org. I hope I spelled it right. Let's double check that. We have the same so T H Y M E L E A F T H C we I added that wrong so I just wanna copy from here and then paste it so I don't make a mistake. Okay, right now Team Leaf Templating Engine wants us to follow the HTML5 syntax. So every tag needs to have a closing tag. That's why we have this slash here. Right, and then after the H1 I want to add an image tag and then for the source and first of all let's just uh, close it and in the source first of all let's just tag it with th and then in the source we are going to add colon assets slash colon and then let's concatenate it with over the file name the project name so that's going to be whatever it we pass into this. So we're going to use the same variable here. So let's add a dollar sign and then open curly brace type project dot project name. Right. And make sure it has a self closing tag by we add this slash. Here. That means it's a self closing tag. Now let's save the file. I just want to stop the server. And we just want to make sure that everything is perfectly fine. And uh, we actually could use this uh, bootstrap. As you can see here, we're using the bootstrap framework for styling over layouting over HTML documents. So this is basically just a plain uh, in image. It's not going to follow the size or it's not going to follow the thumbnail we have right in the index.html. Now, finger crossed and let's run the server and let's see if we are able to achieve this. Okay, there is a problem here. 
Uh, well, we just try it. Let's just go back to the home page. Let's refresh the page. If I click on it, it will give me this error. So let's look at that. I actually made a mistake uh, on purpose. I just wanted to show you how you can fix things. Now, if you look at this image tag, and then let's see what we are missing. First of all, we are passing this uh, colon and, <clears throat> excuse me, assets slash colon. Well, how does it know that this is we trying to uh, access this static folder? Well, we need to have this add sign, right? And we have we need to have the curly brace here, right? And now with the help of add sign and a th, Teamlib templating engine already know that we are trying to access the static folder. And when we go into the static folder here, we pass in this static value because this folder name assets is not going to change. It's going to be static. It's going to be the same. Then we pass in this static value with the help of these two columns. And then we concatenate our project name with the help of the variable we're taking from our controller file. So this is the project name. That's what we're using. And then after that, how does it know the extension of our image? Now the extension is .jpg, which is going to be static. It's not going to change. So we forgot to do that as well. So, and one more uh, uh, error here as well, as well that uh, we have this curly brace, but we don't have the closing curly brace for this. So now we need to concatenate it again. So let's just do that. Add a plus sign. And then here, add a static value dot jpg. And then add a colon as well to make it static. Okay, and then add curly brace. Now we have a curly brace here, we have the curly brace here, and then we have two curly braces, right? So we're concatenating our extension and we are passing this uh, variable. Now spaces doesn't matter, I just make it uh, look nicer. I'll save the file. I'm going to stop the server and we'll just save all the files and let's run our server now. As you can see, we just have one image tag, right? So it's going to take the, uh, the variable from our controller file. Now, finger cross, let's run it again and let's find out if we are able to access the images dynamically. Alrighty. So let's just type localhost 8000. We got our index page and I'm gonna go down and then I'm going to finger cross and then click on this. Okay, so we still have an error. Now let's go to index.html file and let's try to find out what happens when we click on the image. Okay, so we have this anchor tag and Oh, there we go. That's the problem we have. As you can see, this th tag, we're actually not telling to this anchor tag that what we are trying to locate. So we're going to tag it with th. Now let's save the file. Let's run our server by clicking on this button. And hopefully this time we'll be able to get the project images by clicking on them. Right, server has started. Let's open the browser. I'm just gonna push it down so you guys don't see the ads. All right, so here we have this uh, project and then I'm gonna click on Spring Boot and there we go. We got this a very large image, right? And then if I go back and I click on this coding image and there you go, we got this image, whatever we click on. So we click on this Java tutorial we get that image. Now I just want to make this smaller. So what we can do here, we're going to go to index.html file. I'm going to copy all of these tags. Let's just copy them. And then we can paste them here in a head tag. Okay. And then we need, at the bottom we need two scripts as well. So I'm just going to copy these. And then just before finishing our body tag, I'm just gonna paste them here as well. Let's just uh, give a bit of space here. And now we are going to add a container. So let's just say div class container. And then let's just close the div tag here. 
and I'm gonna delete this H1 from here and then we are going to add another div I'm gonna give a class of uh, let's just say row and let's just close that as well now we are going to give another like we're gonna add another div here so a class call and then I'm going to type XS and then we'll give it 12 okay let's just uh, come down and let's just close that div as well so I'm gonna use another bootstrap class so we'll just type class here and the class name is image responsive let's we'll save the file and I'm gonna rerun our server by clicking on the button here and then we're gonna go and open our web app localhost 8000 I believe that server has started all right so let's go and finger cross I'm gonna click on this image and there we go it's responsive we go back click on bootstrap in-depth image coding so as you can see that in our HTML file we pretty much have only one container okay we actually made this dynamic so all the images all the data coming from our project repository and then project repository is creating getting all the data from our project model all right guys so let's look at it one more time and here if i click on java game tutorial if i just decrease the size as you can see we use the bootstrap class to make it responsive as well now this is it for this uh this tutorial series uh that was a project-based tutorial series and i try to cover the basics of spring boot now you gotta learn Spring Boot. I'm just going to take you one last thing so you could self learn a uh, more advanced feature of Spring. So this is a spring.io. We go to guides and then here we have some of the applications already been made. So check them out, download these application and try to learn what they have created and how they have created. Now, the best thing about uh, learning any framework or any language is always go back to the original documentation. So here we have the reference documentation and we go to the reference documentation and here we have Spring Boot Project and then we click on API. So this is the current one, we click, on, click on API and there you go. So all of these things are very useful. Study them, try to improve your uh, Spring and I will do another project using Spring MVC framework uh, later probably in a couple of weeks about how to create a database application so right now we are getting uh, data from our data structure from Java but I want to create a database uh, project as well so stay tuned for that guys and if you have any questions about Spring framework let me know in the comments below and uh, make sure you join my Facebook group for programmers and if you have any questions there I can help you out and we have other programmers there as well which can help you out as well link is in the description alright thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next course